Voices of Today presents Christabel by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, featuring Thomas Peter as the narrator, Lian Yao as Geraldine, P.J. Morgan as Christabel, Andy Harrington as Sir Leoline, and David Shears as the Bard. Part One Tis the middle of night by the castle clock, and the owls have awakened the crowing cock, to wit, to woo, and hark again, the crowing cock, how drowsily it crew. Sir Leoline, the barren rich, hath a toothless mastiff bitch, from her kennel beneath the rock, she maketh answer to the clock, four for the quarters, and twelve for the hour, ever and I, by shine and shower, sixteen short howls, not of aloud. Some say she sees my lady's shroud. Is the night chilly and dark? The night is chilly, but not dark. The thin grey cloud is spread on high. It covers, but not hides the sky. The moon is behind and at the full, and yet she looks both small and dull. The night is chill, the cloud is grey, Tis a month before the month of May, And the spring comes slowly up this way. The lovely lady, Christabel, Whom her father loves so well, What makes her in the woods so late A furlong from the castle gate? She had dreams all yesternight Of her own betrothed night, And she in the midnight wood will pray For the wheel of her lover that's far away. She stole along, she nothing spoke, the sighs she heaved were soft and low, and naught was green upon the oak, but moss and rarest mistletoe. She kneels beneath the huge oak tree, and in silence prayeth she. The lady sprang up suddenly, the lovely lady Christabel. It moaned as near, as near can be, but what it is she cannot tell. On the other side it seems to be Of the huge broad-breasted old oak tree. The night is chill, the forest bare. Is it the wind that moaneth bleak? There is not wind enough in the air To move away the ringlet curl From the lovely lady's cheek. There is not wind enough to twirl The one red leaf, the last of its clan, That dances as often as dance it can, Hanging so light and hanging so high On the topmost twig that looks up at the sky. Hush, beating heart of Christabel, Jesu Maria, shield her well. She folded her arms beneath her cloak And stole to the other side of the oak. What sees she there? There she sees a damsel bright, Dressed in a silken robe of white, that shadowy in the moonlight shone, The neck that made that white robe wan, Her stately neck and arms were bare, Her blue-veined feet unsandaled were, And wildly glittered here and there The gems entangled in her hair. I guess twas frightful there to see A lady so richly clad as she, Beautiful exceedingly. Mary, mother, save me now, said Christabel. And who art thou? The lady strange made answer meet, and her voice was faint and sweet. Have pity on my sore distress. I scarce can speak for weariness. Stretch forth thy hand, and have no fear, said Christabel. How camest thou here? And the lady whose voice was faint and sweet, did thus pursue her answer meet. My sire is of a noble line, and my name is Geraldine. Five warriors seized me yestermorn, me, even me, a maid forlorn. They choked my cries with force and fright, and tied me on a palfrey white. The palfrey was fleet as wind, and they rode furiously behind. They spurred amain, their steeds were white, And once we crossed the shade of night, As sure as heaven shall rescue me, 
I have no thought what men they be, nor do I know how long it is, for I have lain entranced, I was, since one, the tallest of the five, took me from the palfrey's back, a weary woman, scarce alive. Some muttered words his comrades spoke, he placed me underneath this oak, he swore they would return with haste, whether they went I cannot tell, I thought I heard some minutes past, sounds as of a castle bell. Stretch forth thy hand, thus ended she, and help a wretched maid to flee. Then Christabel stretched forth her hand, and comforted fair Geraldine. O oh, well, bright dame, may you command the service of Sir Leoline, and gladly our stout chivalry will he send forth, and friends withal, to guide and guard you safe and free, home to your noble father's hall. She rose, and forth with steps they passed that strove to be, and were not fast. Her gracious stars the lady blessed, and thus spake on sweet Christabel. All our household are at rest, the hall is silent as the cell. Sir Leoline is weak in health, and may not well awakened be, but we will move as if in stealth, and I beseech your courtesy, this night to share your couch with me. They crossed the moat, and Christabel took the key that fitted well, a little door she opened straight, all in the middle of the gate. The gate that was ironed within and without, where an army in battle array had marched out. The lady sank, belike through pain, and Christabel with might and main lifted her up, a weary weight, over the threshold of the gate. Then the lady rose again, and moved, as she were not in pain. So free from danger, free from fear, they crossed the court, right glad they were. And Christabel devoutly cried to the lady by her side, Praise we the Virgin all divine, who hath rescued thee from thy distress. Alas, alas, said Geraldine, I cannot speak from weariness. So free from danger, free from fear, they crossed the court, right glad they were. Outside her kennel, the mastiff old lay fast asleep, in moonshine cold. The mastiff old did not awake, yet she an angry moan did make. And what can ail the mastiff bitch? Never till now she uttered yell beneath the eye of Christabel. Perhaps it is the owlet's scritch, for what can aid the mastiff bitch? They pass the hall, that echoes still, pass as lightly as you will. The brands were flat, the brands were dying, amid their own white ashes lying. But when the lady passed, there came a tongue of light, a fit of flame, and Christabel saw the lady's eye, and nothing else saw she thereby, save the boss of the shield of Sir Leoline Tor, which hung in a murky old niche in the wall. Oh, softly tread, said Christabel. My father seldom sleepeth well. Sweet Christabel her feet doth bear, and jealous of the listening air, they steal their way from stair to stair, now in glimmer, and now in gloom, and now they pass the baron's room, as still as death, with stifled breath, and now have reached her chamber door, and now doth Geraldine press down the rushes of the chamber floor. The moon shines dim in the open air, and not a moonbeam enters here, but they without its light can see the chamber carved so curiously, carved with figures strange and sweet, all made out of the carver's brain for a lady's chamber meet. The lamp with twofold silver chain is fastened to an angel's feet. The silver lamp burns dead and dim, but Christabel the lamp will trim. She trimmed the lamp and made it bright, and left it swinging to and fro, while Geraldine, in wretched plight, sank down upon the floor below. O oh, weary lady Geraldine, I pray you drink this cordial wine. It is a wine of virtuous powers. My mother made it of wild flowers. And will your mother pity me, who am a maiden most forlorn? Christabel answered, Woe is me, she died the hour that I was born. 
I have heard the grey-haired friar tell how on her deathbed she did say that she should hear the castle bell strike twelve upon my wedding day. Oh, mother dear, that thou wert here. I would, said Geraldine. She were. But soon with altered voice, said she. Off, wandering mother, peak and pine, I have power to bid thee flee. Alas, what ails poor Geraldine? Why stares she with unsettled eye? Can she the bodiless dead espy? And why with hollow voice cries she, Off, woman, off, this hour is mine. Though thou her guardian spirit be, Off, woman, off, tis given to me. Then Christabel knelt by the lady's side, And raised to heaven her eyes so blue. Alas, said she, this ghastly ride, Dear lady, it hath wilded you. The lady wiped her moist, curled brow, and faintly said, "'Tis over now. Again the wildflower wine she drank, her fair large eyes gan glitter bright, and from the floor whereon she sank, the lofty lady stood upright. She was most beautiful to see, like a lady of a far country, and thus the lofty lady spake. All they who live in the upper sky do love you, holy Christabel. And you love them, and for their sake, and for the good which me befell. Even I, in my degree, will try, fair maiden, to requite you well. But now, unrobe myself, for I must pray, ere yet in bed I lie. Quoth Christabel, So let it be. And as the lady bade, did she. Her gentle limbs did she undress, and lay down in her loveliness. But through her brain of weal and woe, so many thoughts moved to and fro, that vain it were her lids to close. So halfway from the bed she rose, and on her elbow did recline, to look at the Lady Geraldine. Beneath the lamp the lady bowed, and slowly rolled her eyes around. Then drawing in her breath aloud, like one that shuddered, she unbound the cincture from beneath her breast, her silken robe, and in a vest, dropped to her feet, and full in view, behold, her bosom, and half her side, a sight to dream of, not to tell. O oh, shield her, shield sweet Christabel, yet Geraldine nor speaks nor stirs, Ah, what a stricken look was hers. Deep from within she seems halfway To lift some weight with sick assay, And eyes the maid, and seeks delay. Then suddenly, as one defied, Collects herself in scorn and pride, And lay down by the maiden's side. And in her arms the maid she took, A well a day, and with low voice, and doleful look, these words did say. In the touch of this bosom there worketh a spell, Which is lord of thy utterance, Christabel. Thou knowest to-night, and wilt know to-morrow, This mark of my shame, this seal of my sorrow. But vainly thou warrest, for this is alone in thy power to declare, That in the dim forest, Thou heardst a low moaning, and foundst a bright lady, surpassingly fair, and didst bring her home with thee in love and in charity, to shield her and shelter her from the damp air. It was a lovely sight to see the Lady Christabel when she was praying at the old oak tree, amid the jagged shadows of mossy leafless boughs, kneeling in the moonlight, to make her gentle vows. Her slender palms together pressed, heaving sometimes on her breast, her face resigned to bliss or bale, her face, oh, call it fair, not pale, and both blue eyes more bright than clear, each about to have a tear. With open eyes, ah, Woe is me, asleep, 
and dreaming fearfully, fearfully dreaming, yet, I wis, dreaming that alone, which is, O oh, sorrow and shame, can this be she, the lady who knelt at the old oak tree? And lo, the worker of these harms, that holds the maiden in her arms, seems to slumber still and mild, as a mother with her child. A star has set, a star hath risen, O Geraldine, since arms of thine have been the lovely lady's prison. O Geraldine, one hour was thine, Thou'st had thy will. By turn and drill, the night birds all that hour were still. But now they are jubilant anew, from cliff and tower to woo, to woo, to woo, to woo, to woo from wood and fell, and see, the Lady Christabel gathers herself from out her trance. Her limbs relax, her countenance grows sad and soft, the smooth Thin lids close o'er her eyes, and tears she sheds, large tears that leave the lashes bright. And oft the while she seems to smile as infants at a sudden light. Yea, she doth smile, and she doth weep like a youthful hermitess, beauteous in a wilderness, who, praying always, prays in sleep. And if she move unquietly, the chance, tis but the blood so free, comes back and tingles in her feet. No doubt she hath a vision sweet. What if her guardian spirit were? What if she knew her mother near? But this she knows, in joys and woes, that saints will aid if men will call, for the blue sky bends over all. Part Two each matin bell, the baron saith, knows us back to a world of death. These words Sir Leoline first said, when he rose and found his lady dead. These words Sir Leoline will say, many a morn to his dying day. And hence the custom and law began, that still at dawn the sacristan, who duly pulls the heavy bell, Five and forty beads must tell between each stroke, a warning knell, which not a soul can choose but hear, from Bray the Head to Windermere. Saith Bracy the Bard, So let it knell, and let the drowsy sacristan still count as slowly as he can. There is no lack of such, I ween, as well fill up the space between. In Langdale Pike, and Witch's Lair, and Dungeon Gill so foully rent, with ropes of rock and bells of air, three sinful sexton's ghosts are pent, who all give back, one after t'other, the death note to their living brother. And oft, too, by the knell offended, just as their one, two, three is ended, the devil mocks the doleful tale with a merry peal from Borrodale. The air is still, through mist and cloud, that merry peal comes ringing loud, and Geraldine shakes off her dread, and rises lightly from the bed, puts on her silken vestments white, and tricks her hair in lovely plight, and nothing doubting of a spell, awakens the Lady Christabel. Sleep you, sweet Lady Christabel? I trust that you have rested well. And Christabel awoke and spied the same who lay down by her side. Or rather say, the same whom she raised up beneath the old oak tree. Nay, fairer yet, and yet more fair, for she belike hath drunken deep of all the blessedness of sleep. And while she spake, her looks, her air, such gentle thankfulness declare that, so it seemed, her girded vests grew tight beneath her heaving breasts. Sure I have sinned, said Christabel. Now heaven be praised if all be well. And in low faltering tones, yet sweet, did she the lofty lady greet, with such perplexity of mind, as dreams too lively leave behind. So quickly she rose, and quickly arrayed her maiden limbs, 
and having prayed that he, who on the cross did groan, might wash away her sins unknown, she forthwith led fair Geraldine to meet her sire, Sir Leoline. The lovely maid and the lady tall are pacing both into the hall, and pacing on through page and groom, enter the baron's presence room. The baron rose, and while he pressed his gentle daughter to his breast, with cheerful wonder in his eyes, the lady Geraldine espies, and gave such welcome to the same, as might beseem so bright a dame. But when he heard the lady's tale, and when she told her father's name, why wax Sir Leoline so pale, murmuring o'er the name again, Lord Roland de Vaux of Tryermaine. Alas, they had been friends in youth, but whispering tongues can poison truth, and constancy lives in realms above, and life is thorny, and youth is vain, and to be wroth with one we love doth work like madness in the brain. And thus it chanced, as I divine, with Roland and Sir Leoline. Each spake words of high disdain, an insult to his heart's best brother. They parted, ne'er to meet again. But never either found another, to free the hollow heart from paining. They stood aloof, the scars remaining, like cliffs which had been rent asunder. A dreary sea now flows between. But neither heat, nor frost, nor thunder, Shall wholly do away, I ween, The marks of that which once hath been. Sir Leoline, a moment's space, Stood gazing on the damsel's face. And the youthful lord of Triamane Came back upon his heart again. Oh, then the baron forgot his age, His noble heart swelled high with rage, he swore by the wounds in Jesus' side, he would proclaim it far and wide, with trump and solemn heraldry, that they, who thus had wronged the dame, were base as spotted infamy. And if they dare deny the same, my herald shall appoint a week, and let the recreant traitors seek my tourney court, that there and then I may dislodge their reptile souls from the bodies and forms of men. He spake, his eye in lightning rose, for the lady was ruthlessly seized, and he kenned in the beautiful lady the child of his friend. And now the tears were on his face, and fondly in his arms he took fair Geraldine, who met the embrace, prolonging it with joyous look. Which, when she viewed, a vision fell upon the soul of Christabel, the vision of fear, the touch and pain. She shrunk and shuddered, and saw again, Ah, woe is me, was it for thee, that gentle maid, such sights to see? Again she saw that bosom old, again she felt that bosom cold, and drew in her breath with a hissing sound. Whereat the knight turned wildly around, and nothing saw, but his own sweet maid, with eyes appraised, as one that prayed. The touch, the sight, had passed away, and in its stead that vision blessed, which comforted her after rest. While in the lady's arms she lay, had put a rapture in her breast, and on her lips and o'er her eyes spread smiles like light. With new surprise, What ails then, my beloved child? The baron said. His daughter mild made answer. All will yet be well. I ween she had no power to tell aught else, so mighty was the spell. Yet he, who saw this Geraldine, had deemed her sure a thing divine. Such sorrow with such grace she blended, as if she feared she had offended sweet Christabel, that gentle maid. And with such lowly tones she prayed she might be sent without delay home to her father's mansion. Nay. Nay, by my soul, said Leoline. Ho, Bracy the Bard, the charge be thine. Go thou, with music sweet and loud, and take two steeds with trappings proud, and take the youth whom thou lovest best to bear thy harp and learn thy song, and clothe you both in solemn vest, 
and over the mountains haste along, lest wandering folk that are abroad detain you on the valley road. And when he has crossed the earthing flood, my merry bard, he hastes, he hastes, up Norin Moor, through Halegarth Wood, and reaches soon that castle good, which stands and threatens Scotland's wastes. Bard Bracy, Bard Bracy, your horses are fleet. Ye must ride up the hall, your music so sweet, more loud than your horse's echoing feet. And loud and loud to Lord Roland call, thy daughter is safe in Langdale Hall. Thy beautiful daughter is safe and free. Sir Leoline greets thee thus through me. He bids thee come without delay, with all thy numerous array, and take thy lovely daughter home, and he will meet thee on the way, with all his numerous array, white with their panting palfrey's foam, and by mine honour I will say that I repent me of the day when I spake words of fierce disdain to Roland's devoe of Triermain. For since that evil hour hath flown, Many a summer's sun hath shone, yet ne'er found I a friend again, like Roland de Vaux of Triermain. The lady fell, and clasped his knees, her face upraised, her eyes o'erflowing, and Bracy replied, with faltering voice, his gracious hail on all bestowing. Thy words, thou sire of Christabel, are sweeter than my harp can tell, Yet might I gain a boon of thee, this day my journey should not be, so strange a dream hath come to me, that I had vowed with music loud to clear yon wood from thing unblessed, warned by a vision in my rest, for in my sleep I saw that dove, that gentle bird whom thou dost love, and callst by thy own daughter's name, Sir Leoline, I saw the same fluttering and uttering fearful moan, among the green herbs in the forest alone, which when I saw and when I heard, I wondered what might ail the bird, for nothing near it could I see, save the grass and herbs underneath the old tree, and in my dream methought I went to search out what might there be found, and what the sweet bird's trouble meant that thus lay fluttering on the ground. I went and peered and could descry no cause for her distressful cry, but yet, for her dear lady's sake, I stooped, methought the dove to take, when, lo, I saw a bright green snake coiled around its wings and neck, green as the herbs on which it couched, close by the dove's its head it crouched, and with the dove it heaves and stirs, swelling its neck as she swelled hers. I woke. It was the midnight hour. The clock was echoing in the tower, but though... My slumber was gone by, this dream, it would not pass away, it seemed to live upon my eye, and thence I vowed this selfsame day, with music strong and saintly song, to wander through the forest bare, lest aught unholy loiter there. Thus Bracy said, the baron the while, half listening, heard him with a smile, then turned to Lady Geraldine his eyes made up of wonder and love, and said in courtly accents fine, Sweet maid, Lord Roland's beauteous dove, with arms more strong than harp or song, thy sire and I will crush the snake. He kissed her forehead as he spake, and Geraldine in maiden wise, casting down her large bright eyes, with blushing cheek and courtesy fine, she turned her from Sir Leoline softly gathering up her train, that o'er her right arm fell again, and folded her arms across her chest, and couched her head upon her breast, and looked askance at Christabel. Jesu Maria, shield her well! The snake's small eye blinks dull and shy, and the lady's eyes, they shrunk in her head, each shrunk up to a serpent's eye, and with somewhat of malice and more of dread, at Christabel she looked askance, one moment, and the sight was fled. But Christabel in dizzy trance, stumbling on the unsteady ground, shuddered aloud with a hissing sound, and Geraldine again turned round, 
and like a thing that sought relief, full of wonder and full of grief, she rode her large bright eyes divine, wildly on Sir Leoline. The maid, alas, her thoughts are gone, she nothing sees, no sight but one. The maid, devoid of guile and sin, I know not how, and fearful wise, so deeply had she drunken in that look, those shrunken serpent eyes, that all her features were resigned to the sole image in her mind, and passively did imitate that look of dull and treacherous hate. And thus she stood in dizzy trance, still picturing that look askance, with forced unconscious sympathy full before her father's view. As far as such a look could be, an eye so innocent and blue. And when the trance was o'er, the maid paused a while, and inly prayed, then falling at the baron's feet. By my mother's soul do I entreat that thou this woman send away, she said, and more she could not say. For what she knew she could not tell, er mastered by the mighty spell. Why is thy cheek so wan and wild, Sir Leoline? Thy only child lies at thy feet, thy joy, thy pride, so fair, so innocent, so mild, the same for whom thy lady died. Though by the pangs of her dear mother, think thou no evil of thy child, for her and thee and for no other. She prayed the moment ere she died, prayed that the babe for whom she died might prove her dear lord's joy and pride, that prayer her deadly pangs beguiled, Sir Leoline. And wouldst thou wrong thy only child, her child and thine? Within the baron's heart and brain, if thoughts like these had any share, they only swelled his rage and pain and did but work confusion there. His heart was cleft with pain and rage, his cheeks were quivered, his eyes were wild, dishonoured thus in his old age, dishonoured by his only child, and all his hospitality to the wronged daughter of his friend, by more than woman's jealousy, brought thus to a disgraceful end. He rolled his eye with stern regard upon the gentle minstrel bard, and said in tones abrupt, austere, Why, Bracy? Dost thou loiter here? I bade thee hence. The bard obeyed, and turning from his own sweet maid, the aged knight, Sir Leoline, led forth the lady Geraldine. Conclusion A little child, a limber elf, singing, dancing to itself, a fairy thing with red round cheeks, that always finds and never seeks, makes such a vision to the sight, as fills a father's eyes with light, and pleasures flow in so thick and fast upon his heart, that he at last must needs express his love's excess with words of unmeant bitterness. Perhaps tis pretty to force together thoughts so all unlike each other, to mutter and mock a broken charm, to dally with wrong that does no harm, Perhaps tis tender too, and pretty, at each wild word to feel within a sweet recoil of love and pity. And what, if in a world of sin, O oh sorrow and shame should this be true, such giddiness of heart and brain come seldom save from rage and pain, so talks as it's most used to do. End of poem. We hope that you have enjoyed this production of Christabel by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, brought to you by Voices of Today, audio edited by Lian Yao. This recording may be freely downloaded and distributed, as long as Voices of Today is credited as a creator. It may not be used for commercial purposes, or distributed in an edited or remixed form. For information about other recordings in the Voices of Today catalogue, please visit voicesoftoday.org. Thank you for listening.